Good morning, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful black people. I hope that all is well in your world and this day become a wonderful day for you and all of your wonderful black loved ones. Beautiful black people, you hear me frequently say in my audio presentations that black folks, people that looked like me, created everything. Truthfully, the reality is black folks created everything. It has been whitewashed by envious, hateful, racist white folks for centuries. The University of Sankor, S-A-N-K-O-R-E, in Mali, M-A-L-I. Mali is one of the 54 African countries. The University of Sankor is the oldest university in the world. It's not one of the oldest universities in the world, as those racist white folks will suggest. The University of Sankor in Mali is the oldest university on the planet. In the early 15th century, Mali, precisely in the eastern city of Timbuktu, which is in Mali, you could find three major intellectual institutions which were called Jun Gare. One of them was called Jun Jure. The other one was called City Yaya. And finally, the third one was called the University of Sankor in Timbuktu. The eminent University of Sankor a spectacular pyramid shaped work of architecture. Who do you think built the pyramids? It was black African folks, people that looked like me, people that looked like you. Don't believe the denials and the deflections, the confusion that racist white folks slash Europeans have propagated about the pyramids. The pyramids were built by black African human beings, period. Few people today know that the university that the University of Sankor was founded in 989 A.D. Get that. That's 989 A.D. It was founded by an erudite chief. He was an erudite chief of Timbuktu. His name was al Qadi Agib Mahmoud. al Qadi Agib Mahmud. That was his name. It was founded during the time 
of the Ghana Empire. And this University of Sankor stayed relevant into the Mali Empire. And then the University of Sankor survived another political transition into the time period of the Sungai Empire. Look those dynasty, dynasties up. The dynasty of Ghana, the dynasty of Mali, the dynasty of Sungai. They were real. Sankor University was built as a madrasa. I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's pronounced madrasa. And you spell it M-A-D-R-A-S-S-A-H. And it's pronounced madrasa. And madrasa in Arabic will translate into the word school. And that madrasa term is used among other non-Arabic speaking Muslim communities. A madrasa at the time had a somewhat different organization and structure from common universities of the of medieval Europe. Although the highest level of learning at the time had similar focuses on European studies, generally speaking, even though the University of San Cor was founded much earlier. Rather than having a central administration, the University of Sankor was composed of several independent schools or colleges. Each one was run by a single head, a scholar or professor. The courses were conducted in the open courtyards of the mosque. complex or private residences. Among the subjects that was taught at the University of Sankor were medicine. It was founded in 989 AD. Among the courses taught was medicine. Was medicine and physics it was mathematics it was surgery it was astronomy chemistry, philosophy, language, linguistics, history and geography, and, of course, the arts. All of those subjects, complexities, was being taught at the University of Sankor. However, the principal subject matter was called Islamic Studies. The principal subject matter was called Islamic Studies. 
law and literature. It is also reported that students were spending time learning trade along with its relevant business codes and ethics. The university offered a myriad of trade classes, including business, carpentry, farming, fishing, construction, tailoring, navigation, shoemaking, and many other handy trades. Sancor University prospered and became a great intellectual institution, particularly during the 12th through the 16th century. The city of Timbuktu was a destination for merchants from both the Middle East and North Africa. This allowed different merchandise and ideas to pass through the legendary city. And since most of the traders were Muslims, the mosque of San Cor would always have visitors. Those visitors contributed in the accumulation of wealth, of books from throughout the different Muslim regions and countries that they came from. At some point, Books became more valuable than any other good in the city of Timbuktu, and several private libraries were built in the homes of native scholars. Timbuktu was the place where all of these European looking White folks would travel to be taught to learn from black African people, Muslims, people that looked like me, people that looked like you, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. During the colonial period, that's when white folks <laughs> invaded and tried to slice the continent of Africa up like a cake. During the colonial period, the white folks made huge efforts, was made to conceal the documents stored in the university and its private libraries after a number of entire libraries was taken to London, Paris, and other places in Europe. They stole all of that shit, all of that those documents from the University of San Cor and called it their own, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. Some manuscripts were buried underground and others were hidden in caves or in the desert. Many still remain hidden to this day. White folks invaded the continent, stole the pertinent, pertinent documents that they wanted to copy and call their own and hid and destroyed the documents that they never wanted to see the light of day. Do you know that the University of San Cor curriculum had four degree levels? The highest degree level, which is equivalent to a Ph.D. of today, took the students 10 years to undertake. It was centered around debates, debates on philosophy 
and religious questions, and the students were required to study under specialized professors. During the graduation ceremony, the graduate would wear the traditional turban symbolizing divine light, wisdom, knowledge, and high morals. Moreover, graduates had to demonstrate excellent character and care for Islamic values prior to receiving their graduation invitation. In celebration of receiving their diplomas, the graduates would gather in the main campus library and throw their turbans high into the air. And that tradition was stolen, copied by the Europeans, and it's still used today. After throwing the turbans high into the air, there was an accompanied cheer and holding each other's hands in show of their brotherly and sisterly bond that was developed during their years of studying at the University of Sankoa. The University of Sankoa granted admission to students from different origins and diverse backgrounds. The University of Sankoa was the place for education. Where do you think all of those white European philosophers, astronomers from Greece, from Europe, where do you think they studied? They went to Mali, the University of Sankoa, learn all that they could from the black African Muslim, and then went back to their white countries and called what they have learned from black Africans their own. Hence is why when you open up a philosophy book, a book of logic, a book of ethics, all you see is history, texts, credentials about white folks, about Europeans, never anything about the University of Sancor. They hid, they whitewashed that information, just as these racist white folks have whitewashed everything in the curriculum right here on this plantation called America today. They are teaching these European created lies all across the globe, every day. They are even teaching these European-created lies in schools on the continent of Africa. Do a little bit of research, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters, and you will begin to see, and you will agree, that black folks, people that looked like me, people that looked like you, created everything. Black folks created everything. Black folks invented everything. That's all I have on this one.